always a reminder for myself, an abdukul ajeezu, da'eefu, miskeenu, zalimu, jahal and but for the grace of Allah <coughs> that we are in existence. So all these teachings are a life preserver for days of difficulty. Don't think that deceit come from Christian and Jewish people and other faiths, they have their own problems in their faith to worry about. It's within the Islamic faith and the Islamic community that Dajjal will present many different thoughts, many different uh, understandings. We said to pick away at somebody's faith, you pick away, pick away, pick away until they're hollow and vulnerable in which whatever they ask it won't be granted and whatever they do has no barakah and no hawla and no quwwah. And that's all that he wants is to begin to pick away and that becomes the danger. That picking away may even sound entertaining for people, oh it sound like it was really you know interesting. But in the end they teach a way in which to decipher. In the end do you think you are reaching closer to the hand and the solution of every talk and understanding an entire principle of a shaykh's website? Uh, video channel, is it in the pursuit of the love of Sayyidina Muhammad that is the key, miftah rahmah. If it doesn't have that key we find it to be of no value not on earth and not in akhirah. So as these difficulties are opening the students are being trained to see, it doesn't look like it's going in that direction. Then the 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 verbiage in which or the use of the tongue in which someone uses that the people of the kingdom because their arwa is from that reality, they are people of the house and the Divinely Presence. Their life and their soul is in that Divine courtyard in which all their Sayyids and Masters are always in front of them. And they address them with the reverence that they address in the heavens as it is on earth. My kingdom come, my will shall be done on earth as it is in heaven. So anyone from a heavenly kingdom must be talking about these heavenly souls as if he is from the heavenly kingdom. But when you don't give the title and don't talk with that reverence of who this kingdom and who the inhabitants of this Divinely court are, you clearly identify yourself as not from the people of the kingdom. You may be outside from the farm but you're not within the Divinely court. And again that is a teaching in which to understand the students can hear, they're not talking the same. So move on, don't waste your time, inshaAllah. We have some uh, questions for the questions and answers inshaAllah for Interactive Thursday, Bismillah. Mm -hmm. As Salaamu Alaikum Beloved Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa mm -hmm. Can positive energy increase or bring out the negative energy of the person you are interacting with? Sure, that's the whole understanding of, of energy and all the talks on energy. It's just a s simple test in school what we had was magnetism and the battery you would get and you would coil and with this battery you would attach this coil and it would uh, attract the paper clips. All of these teachings in school bring us back to just simple understanding of energy. In life we try to produce a more positive charge. As a result of that positive charge it's going to collect negative charge. So watch where you go in life. If you go to too many negative places and deal with too many negative people, what's happening? You're picking up their negative charge. And instead of picking up their negative charge, what does the atomic structure teach us? That if we're trying to reach our reality, I should be busy trying to get rid of my negative charge, right? So there's no growth of an electron until it gives away its negative charge. 
and then it moves closer towards the nucleus. So our life is about giving away our negative charge, getting rid of our negative charges and perfecting and, and trying to perfect ourselves, not trying to collect negative charges. That's one understanding, so where we go and we go too much frequently in front of people, oh you're going to be picking up a lot of negative charges, most likely you come back yelling, screaming, angry, uh, frustrated and all these characteristics because you're not somebody trained in which to wash, meditate, push away these negativities and then have strong spiritual practices in which to build your energy. And then the concept of having positive energy and going in front of somebody that not only is not giving away a negative charge but becomes angered by your positive charge. And that can be also the case because excessive positive charge burns people. So that's when people become agitated by the presence of somebody and their energies and their negativity and that's also you know part of the experimental class. When you experiment with these energies you start to learn and understand, you put the ta'weez in the house and then certain people become angry. So that's a sign it's working. You put the pictures of the shaykh and somebody comes in and gets very angered by the picture says, what is this take it down because again the energy that is on them is being burned by the energies that are coming from these holy people. But you put negative pictures and, and dunya images they don't say anything. And all day long watching TV they don't say anything. But as soon as it comes to holy people and holy and heavenly Divinely everybody has a problem because they have their devils have a problem and they become just the voice of the devils that occupy them. Mm, as salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Can you please guide us what to do when our parents are not interested in allowing us to have taweezes on and at home? Yeah, if you're living at home then you, you know try to hide these things so that you don't have to have a conflict with your family and you don't have to show it to them and uh, that's the only thing you can do is try to hide it and uh, if they're looking for it put it in your pocket and until you're, you're of an age that you have your own home and you're free to do what you have to do for your belief and your practices and, and inshaAllah Allah give give you patience, sabr and support. But we don't uh, encourage any type of arguments and, and, and debates. If you're living under the roof of somebody and they feel it to be offensive then you know, some inna wa ta'ala we hear and we obey and try to obey the authority and not be confrontational and you try to hide it and, and it shouldn't be a problem if it's in your pocket and nobody's going to look through all your things. So that's a matter of, of respect. When you have your own residence and your own home and, and this is the way you want to live then people who want to come and debate you know, say, yeah you're, you're to you your way and to me my way is, is more important, inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu dear shaykh Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah uh, Our Nabi said in a hadith about a time when staying home would be the best bet for a believer due to overwhelming sins and difficulties. Oh, was he talking about our time? InshaAllah Prophet described that the one whom is uh, sitting is better than the one standing, the one standing is better than the one walking, the one walking is better than the one running. It means these were all a symbol of a great fitna that would come upon the earth in which wherever you move you're either entering into sins and difficulties. And we see that on the earth everywhere now. We believe that these are the times of the last days and glad tidings for the people of the last days because along with all these scary teachings and signs and alamat, Prophet described to the holy companions that there's a nation in the end of time that would do anything for a glimpse of me and they are my lovers. They love me and I love them. So that's a title in which Sayyidina Muhammad gave to the last days nation and that's why all our teachings is last days, last days so that we can have that title. If you died, you died with intention of Ahbab and Nabi We're not here to prove it, 
We're here to say, no Ya Rabbi we're living with the intention that these are the last days. We believe we are the Ahbab and Nabi the lovers, we are the people of this title, grant us this title, kulu amalu bin niyat. So the hikmah and the wisdom of these teachings of which are many is that we can have that title. That we trained all our life that these are the last days Ya Rabbi, let us to have that title. And if you died in the process, alhamdulillah Allah raised you with your intention that you are from the Ahbab, you are from the lovers. Your life was to love Prophet and Prophet inshaAllah loves you. Uh, this is a comment, uh, As Sayyidi, thank you so much for everything. I learned so much for, uh, from your teachings in a few months uh, that I learned in my whole lifetime regarding this beautiful religion. Uh, thank you. Walaykum as alhamdulillah. Thank you. Another question, As Salaamu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Shaykh. Uh, I love you so much, it's beautiful to see the growth I've done until now with you. Uh, thank you and Allah bless you. Uh, what is the symbolic meaning of the color green? The symbolic meaning of the color green, inshaAllah we have from the <clears throat> in the importance of the levels of the heart that we have the, in the book the levels of the heart then these colors are important in relationship to the reality and the lataifs of the heart. So that's important that to read from the heart book so that we understand the house of Allah because anything that says heart we said before is a description of the house of Allah and anywhere in Qur'an that mention the house of Allah the Kaaba is actually in reference to your heart and the heart of the believer. So they're switching and that has an immense reality. When we read about Holy Qur'an and what Allah talking about, my house, wash my house, purify my house, circumambulate my house, bow down and worship to my house, Allah talking as a reality of the heart of the believer and that the believer must know that their heart has to be prepared to be the house of Allah So what would you put into your heart if you wanted Allah there? That's why then you study from then, I want to get the book on the levels of the heart, I want to study the levels of the heart, I want to read each section and begin to purify my heart. So we start with the yellow, then it goes red, white, then green and then black into the center. Green has to do with the reality in which Prophet love the color green and has to do with the resurrection, has to do with the everything resurrecting and being alive. So when we see something green we know that it's alive, that so when autumn and all the fall everything is dying. As soon as these things are dying they turn into a brown then like greyish black. You see by the immensity of spring and the reality of Nuruz, why we say Nuruz in these cultures in the regions of Khurasan, these were the celebrations of the resurrection because of the immensity of the secret of the April showers that Allah every year and at every occasion is resurrecting. So why do you think that it's hard for us to be resurrected? When every tree is being resurrected, every leaf is being resurrected, every flower that is de dead in the fall and winter, all of a sudden by April a rain comes and these plants come back. This reality and the power of this rain is a secret, it's a secret of a life force that enters onto the soil and by command a leaf is coming, a flower is growing and everything is coming back to life. So this stage of the lataif which is the khaffa, this, you have the, the qalb, the sir, sir sir most secret. Then the khaffa's translation is the hidden and then akhfa most hidden, yeah which is the hidden reality. So the khaffa reality has to do with resurrection that we die from our dunya desire and the dunya reality that we have to die, you're not really living. And we describe that as a seed, so all these analogies are the same. That if you think you're alive and you're a seed, that's not the life. 
the seed has to die, has to disappear. As a result the flower will appear, the plant and the tree will appear and all its realities. And that even has a reality, so somebody else posted something very nice that, don't look to the leaves of the tree but look to the fruits of the tree. So the tree as it begins to blossom its, its reality is coming out. But don't be focused on its leaves but look to the fruit of what it's producing. Then it tells you where that tree is from. Because everything may be nice in the garden but what's coming from that tree of fruits, its source must be of a different reality. So green is resurrection and a rebirth, what we're all trying to achieve to die from one existence and enter into the reality in which Allah has written for us, inshaAllah. Mm. Mm. As Salaamu Alaikum Ya Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa uh, It is an immense blessing to be guided to Tariqat al Aliyah. What is it that made us sinners to have this privilege? Is it the du'as of our ancestors? Is it something we did before? InshaAllah it's Allah's ni'mat that whatever Allah has written as an immense blessing that has been granted to us. So it is a grant and a treasure from Allah that what been written from the day of promises. And Allah knows best from what He's written of pious people and the descendants of pious people. I think Mawlana Shaykh Sharafuddin what the Sallallahu Siru did a reality within Surat Al An-Nam, the sixth surah, in which he pulled out the reality from that holy verse that Allah describes from the Prophets, we brought their ancestors and pious people. Means from the, the seed of their piety, all the, the fruits that are coming will be pious. So their origin is from that. From that ayat al kareem he pulled out all the names of the, the khulafa of Imam Mahdi Salam, the Nawab of Sayyidina Mahdi Salam, all the reality and the names of the followers of Sayyidina Mahdi Salam. From that reality and that ayat al kareem with his spiritual power he went into that ayat al kareem and pulled that out of realities. But the main understanding of the teaching is that from a noble seed comes many noble fruits. So they have an origin for people to be in the turuqs and tariqahs and the Muhammadan haqqaiq, their nobility and the reality and the preciousness of their soul traces its, ba its origin back to something very important, inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah How to stay in the same feeling of contemplation when we are not in contemplation and prevent distractions? It's not about staying on. So our, our life is on and off. When you see the shaykh in a normal circumstance, he's off laughing, joking and con controlling himself within sharia, he's not becoming crazy person. but. They, many times people think that I want to go see a shaykh and, and see that you know as he continues on, oh my god he's so pious he doesn't even smile. No, it, it's, that's not Naqshbandiya and the Naqshbandiya teaching is that you have to understand the binary system, you have to understand on and off, you have to be able to turn off so that people can be at ease around you. Otherwise a continuous state of on would drive people crazy. They don't have the ability just to be normal and, and to, to, to recuperate and the energy that would be coming from that, you would blow the fuse of many people because it's just too much. So in, in their training and in their way was a continuous learning of how to be off. And as a result it's a dangerous state for the students because when the shaykh is off the students have to be on. Means they don't joke with him too much in which to lose their adab because his state is off and think, okay now I can uh, pass every barrier. So that becomes the whole way of testing that they 
keep their ihtiram, their respect, their, their understanding. At the same time the shay shaykh lowers it and makes it to be of ease so that people can be a little bit freer in which Prophet described that, lower your wings to the believers so that they can approach you. So that you're approachable from the highest to the lowest, the most knowledgeable to the least knowledgeable, your reality is approachable to them. And when the zikr starts, the talk start, it's on, their energy's on, their connection's on and the tajallis are, are moving. They don't joke, they try to keep whatever tajalli they have. Some do joke because they're funny in their nature. And that's the tajalli of the shaykhs. Remember we went to maqam in Uzbekistan, Maulana Anjir Faqnawi, Anjir with the grapes. So Maulana Anjir Faqnawi in I think it was in Bukhara and they were describing this and they say he was a very funny shaykh, he was a very humorous character and they're describing it. We were with Shaykh Nazim, Shaykh Hisham, everybody at that maqam, everybody was laughing at that maqam that Shaykh Nazim was like, just making things and everything was funny and the tajalli of the shaykh was actually there at the maqam. So they had a very lively loving sort of jamali tajalli of, of muhabbat and love and, and make it easy and as a result many people were attracted to that reality. So alhamdulillah, inshaAllah which I make us to be loving, funny, easy people. <laughs> yeah, the scary ones are angry ones, that's scary. Why do they have to be so angry? Yeah, inshaAllah. Um, As-salamu Sayyidi Walaykum as salam Since so many new strains of viruses are evolving, <laughs> just as you warned us, should we also be prepared for a zombie virus? Zombie? That's what the CDC has on their website. Anybody wants to go to the US website for Center for Disease and Control, they have a section called the zombie apocalypse. And they said it was a joke but they must have spent a couple hundred thousand dollars for that whole section of their website. So if they have a lot of money to joke with or the eventuality of all these shots and all <laughs> these viruses is a cocktail. So how many times people want to take a, a shot in a vaccine for how many different variants? So before you know it they're going to have so many of these cocktails within them and uh, the danger of all, all of these sort of uh, interacting and, and counteracting each other. So it's a, it's a dangerous way and it's a system based on fear and lack of faith. And that's the danger of dunya is that dunya lost its faith in a, in a supreme power and a supreme healer and as a result they want to fix everything. So when they try to fix everything and, and think that they can cure everything but the cure is in the hand of the Creator and if He's not bringing a cure and you keep trying to fix you're going to have many problems. You know you keep putting a patch on this it pops a new one from here, you put a patch on there put a new one from here. So this is a time in which is the last days in which there won't be any fix as much as they fix. Allah brings something different. So this is a time not which in to run to get all these things but to make sure that we're good with our Lord. That was the talk for tonight, that we're good with Allah and what Allah wants from us then be in the hands of your beloved Prophet And that gives us our sanctuary, that gives us our sanity, that gives us a love that I'm, I'm good with you inshaAllah, I'm trying my best, I'm trying to be of service, I'm trying to do the khidmat, I'm trying to spread the good word and the good ambassadorship of that reality. And if I put myself to sleep and you have to take me, then take my soul, I'm ready to go. So you have a sense of a sakina and a peace within the heart. But what causes people not to be peaceful and, and peaceful at night is they don't know, where will I go if something happens? When I lay my soul to sleep I pray for you my soul to take, I don't know what the prayers that they, they give. If they don't feel a sense of peace of course yes they're very aggravated, agitated throughout the day they're, they're scared and that's why these teachings are trying to bring a peace to people's heart. Be good with Allah and the secret to being good with Allah is have an immense love for Sayyidina Muhammad in which you feel, you know, you feel that presence, you feel that love, you feel that closeness, you feel you're doing all that you can do 
to gain access to that reality and alhamdulillah then the rest is in Allah's hands. And if Allah needs me on this earth alhamdulillah, if I can be of service alhamdulillah. And if Allah want me to go back home then alhamdulillah, at least we have a home to go back to inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Sayyidi Wa alaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah. How do you contemplate in tafakkur and slow down when tafakkur is just trying to make the connection with the shaykh? Please forgive me. How do you slow down? <clears throat> yeah, just the process. It's not an easy process because Western ideology makes it sound so easy and you know, hug a tree, it's, it's not like that. As soon as you want to sit and meditate your, your nafs not going to allow it, it's not, not now, not, not do, you have to do this, you have to do that, we have all these things to do. That immediately you can hear the waswas, so that oh that's a waswas, yeah that's the waswas. And to sit in an area that's quiet and, and everybody's asleep and ask to ask for support in the madad and visualize the shaykh is in front of you, do your awrad or just breathe, it's not an easy phase, that is the slowdown. Once you do that, do that, do that, do that until you can begin to feel that energy and the fires and the connection. That in itself will begin to draw the heart to slow down because now inspirations will come from that connection that you're connecting, say to just me from your light, dress me from this energy that uh, make my salawats and my zikrs to be real and then with that connection you begin to make your salawats, your zikrs, everything its fruits begin to open. The more you enter into that grave and slowing down the more the fruits of akhirah are attracting you. Right now you don't see any fruits, you're just busy with the fruits of dunya. How am I going to get this, 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 all this cash here, I'm going to get here, I'm going to get there. So for someone to actually slow down, try to make the connection and then Allah will begin to open the real fruits of what ha what's happening of these energies, you make it zikr in, in your meditation and begin to make salawats and you feel the real power of what these salawats are doing, you feel energized like a, uh, like a power plant is coming through you through the salawats. So all of these Allah will be uh, hey <laughs> to open these energies. InshaAllah. <laughs> Um, no, Asalaamu Alaikum wa Sayyidi. Thank you for the beautiful words of wisdom. Walaykum Can you please explain the power of dua and how we should make dua? No, because he's going to scream now. Because <laughs> electricity came. <laughs> what was the question? Um, can you please explain the power of dua and how we should make dua? The power of du'a and how to make du'a. We said that the real du'a is uh, not on the mouth. So if we go first to the reality, the reality of du'a, real du'a is not by kalam and not by… <laughs> what's the rhyming word for lips? <laughs> it's not by your lips because Allah said, I'm going to seal your lips when you come into My presence. So we know that the earth is filled with lies and people who lie. So Allah is not interested in, in lying mouths that just keep moving and, and flapping like a bird. So the reality of du'a is that they've been trained with their tafakkur and all their salawats and all this love that they have that their house became the house of ishq and love and their house is like a burning love that it, it's catching and it's always like a flame that's on. As soon as they raise their hand to make a du'a in their heart, Allah release for them like a fragrance, like a bukhura atar and, and the sincerity of their issue when they're going to make a, a munajat and a du'a that is required of the full attention, it moves them emotionally. As a result, uh, an utter a fragrance of perfume is released from them and hits their heart, the fragrance of that it attracts the angels and the angels take the fragrance to Allah And that's the du'a that Allah accepts, the one that is coming through the fragrance of the heart. That's the aromatherapy, that's the angelic therapy, that's the reality. The other ones now lesser du'a 
is going to be by the one from the mouth in which they're making their du'a, they made their practices, they made their istighfar and then that becomes all the energy practices that you wash. Anytime you're going to do anything spiritual you make wudu, you have salat al-wudu, you sat down, you used your siwak. You made your istighfar that day, you made salawat on Sayyidina Muhammad Once you made your istighfar it's like a washing machine. Once you made salawat on Sayyidina Muhammad then you begin making your du'as. And said the highest and most noble du'as are the durood sharif The app is filled with salawats, those are all immense du'as. You want an opening, Salawat al-Fatiha. You want a, a, this a relief from distress, Salawat al-Nariya, a kamila. So all, all of those are the reality of du'a is that you must be praising upon Sayyidina Muhammad that he asked Allah for that relief, for that opening, for that difficulty to be stopped. That becomes the secret in getting Allah's attention. Allah just, well, okay you talking and just asking or you praising upon His most beloved, now you have Allah's attention with beautific praisings and beautific kalam in which, in which awliyaullah wrote, then Allah find inshaAllah acceptance because Prophet is interceding inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh Walaykum As Salaam wa <coughs> What is the reality of salah? What is salah? <laughs> the reality of salah, that's going to require a whole talk. You should write that down for tomorrow night inshaAllah and we go into the reality because that's the whole talk, I mean, the, the reality of salah. We have uh, videos on the website and articles on the, on the website, go to nurmuhammad.com and the reality of salah. The salah is a communication that Allah gave to us, one is, uh, is the grounding of the donkey. So the real salah is something different. This imitated salah that we are doing is a form of discipline in which to show Allah you're capable of disciplining your bad character. So when we meet people who we said in the video that came out on Saturday, they released the video on Wednesday, it wasn't Saturday. Yeah, it was supposed to be Saturday, then it was supposed to be Sunday but came out Wednesday, that's why he screamed, ah! <laughs> But in that video it talked about that reality and that, uh, where are we? Hmm? The reality of the salah and? Talk, last talk came out. Yeah, in the video? Yeah. What was in the video? We can continue tomorrow on the subject. Continue tomorrow on the subject, I'm, I draw a blink inshaAllah from that. But the immensity of the salah and that it's a discipline for the bad character. So when we meet people that say, oh they pray you know in their heart to God, that's, that's something different. Allah wanted for us to condition us. That everything in Islam is about a discipline, that I want to see from you a discipline. I want you to discipline yourself. We say, why in the principle of accepting Islam the first is the shahada? Allah knows what your faith is, why you have to recite the shahada? Because it's not for Allah. So none of these are for Allah Allah doesn't gain wealth by your wealth, doesn't gain power by your prayers, doesn't, he doesn't make it glorified by our praise. These are only for you and ourselves and our nafs, want to beat down the nafs and release the soul. And that's what Allah want. You're on earth, your soul is being held prisoner by your, your nafs, your ego, bad character and these practices will break that. So as soon as they come and they give their shahada, a testimony of faith, it's to re reaffirm for yourself, that confirm to yourself there is nothing but Allah and that Muhammadun Rasulullah and that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah 
This is not for Allah but for me to continuously confirm to myself there's nothing but Allah means that I don't exist and that Muhammadun Rasulullah is the Messenger of Allah So who am I? So then I'm completely negating myself and confirming the azimat and, and immensity of Allah and the love that He has for Sayyidina Muhammad When it comes then to salah and the usul of salah is that to discipline yourself, go wash, oh I don't feel like wash, you have to wash. Then go make your salah, move through your movements and then the reality of each movement is the ihtiram for Divinely Presence that when you stand is the glorification of Allah that you stand for Almighty. When you enter into ruku, Allah is allowing you to come closer. So as a result you bow into that presence that your your glory and your magnificence that I'm nothing. Then Allah giving a sharat that raise your head and as you coming back up and glorifying Allah the azimat of Allah and the might and majesty of Allah require you to make sujood because Allah is opening His lights onto your soul as a sign of the immensity of that go into prostration. So that to glorify the highest glorification of Allah is when His servant is in prostration. That my light shining upon you, prostrate yourself to me to show my superiority over you. So it's, a, it's for me Allah doesn't need to know His superiority, He already knows it. I need to remember it at every moment and when Allah finds satisfaction in the servant that they're consistent with their salah, they're doing these things means they have a dominion over their beast. So they have a ability to ride their beast. Then now all these other usuls are coming in and, and perfecting the, the character, bringing down their beast and bringing out the reality of the soul inshaAllah with good character and, and all of the different practices inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaikum dear Shaykh Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah The concept of a veil is stated in this path, how do we know when we have made a penetration through that veil? Is it necessary to know? Because these veils that we talk about and maqams that we talk about there's, there's no doubt in them because they're not philosophies. What you enter in you know you entered in. What Allah dress you with, you know that you've been dressed with, there's no doubt, there's no guessing, there's no, did that just happen? It happened. Yeah, so it's not something that will miss you and you didn't catch it, you didn't write the exact the salawats on this time or you didn't do the ten of this one and, you, and it went by and you know that when something happens it's a significant happening. So it's not something that anyone's going to miss. So these tajallis, these lights, these energies when Allah is going to dress the servant with their connection. We said before they don't have to guess if they're connected, you feel as if the shaykh grabbed your heart and you feel like you're having heart attack. Means their light and a jalali tajalli is now in the heart and grabbing and as a result you feel that energy. When it happens, it happens, you feel the energy. When Allah ignite the servant, they get heated. So you, you didn't guess, you're, you're heated in the middle of the zikr, salawats, in the practices. So these are known events that will happen to the servant, not something in passing that came and went or close your eyes and you see orbs are going around. This is not it, this, this is not what they're talking about. The tajalli in which Allah want to dress the servant, it's a happening. It's an awakening, they feel the energies, they feel the heat, they get heated up, their body's all heated up, their mouth may have problems because of the amount of heat that their body is processing, they get like blisters and things. So all of these are heated parts of their body. They know that those energies are coming and how to sort of cool those energies down and, and to, to go through what Allah want them to go through inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh What are we supposed to do when we come across friends and family who are in difficulty? Not everyone is following tariqah but can we remind your teachings to them and guide them to you or just pray for them and not attract their negativity on us? 
Yes, you can share the links, that's a good subject that we, we saw that sometimes people start posting. And because of the life that we live now on social media which wasn't like this 25 years ago, we would take the shaykh's teachings and we would give out cassettes. There was no emails 25 years ago, it was just coming out the internet. So shaykh would talk, somebody would record the cassette, we would go to a duplicating service and make 50 cassettes and then hand them out, these are the sobats and people would listen to them. But you never took his cassette and made your own cassette. And Shaykh Nazim is telling you now, put the honey down, don't drink like that and nobody would get your cassette, they said, what is that? So now this was me talking about what I heard in my ear from Shaykh Nazim's talk, so this not, was not like that. But social media now changed where everyone now is giving their own sobats, so that's different. When you take the shaykh's teachings and you begin to make your posts based on as if it's a teaching and you begin to have a few people following. The danger, the danger that's happening is that the shaykh is a lion tamer. He's being attacked all the time by the nafs of people, by the characters of people, by the nazar of people and Allah has set him up in that position. Means that for him to go out they must have shield and put all different barriers of protection and said, now here these lions go out because they're all trying to attack you. Their egos are not happy with the talks, their, their nazars are not happy with the… So they have a, a, a protection and a training which they've gone through. When people are interacting now on social media, posting some teachings, some knowledges, writing it in their own way, they begin to attract certain people. Then you can see them cross posting, oh this is Ray, oh mashaAllah this, then this one posts and they say happy things on their page and then they post back and say happy things on their page. Before you know it you're dealing with lions. At one point somebody's going to be insulted that, oh you're actually trying to teach me? Who are you to teach me? Because it was just listening before, now they got an audience they might as well throw in some teachings too. And that's where the danger and people begin to fight and you see all these negative comments start to come. So that's, that's the difficulty. So imagine doing that with family where you're not really versed on it and now all of a sudden you're going to sit down and the nafs is, well let me just sort of come in as a preacher into this family gathering and begin to teach them everything. That's one way to get like beaten up by your whole family audience. And where did you come from? Now you're going to teach us? Say, yes, as a matter of fact, sit down, <laughs> grab a chair, stand up on the chair like it's Jummah <laughs> Now, so this it's, it's difficult. But if you have like social media and you want to say, oh, this is the shaykh I'm following, if you want to listen to this video, it's the shaykh talking. And then you're also in the barakah of propagating his da'wah. If this is his mission from Sayyidina Muhammad support it. Then you're getting the support of the ridha and satisfaction of Prophet So when you support with your money, with your time, with your funds, with your ability, when you're reposting, taking a video and then posting it on Facebook, imagine three, 300 people are watching now and 300 people go to them and find your favorite YouTube video of ours and post it on Facebook with 300 posts of videos. So now how many people would you attract that way? But unfortunately 300 people want to post their own quote and attract people to themselves. So it wasn't propagating the shaykh's teachings and that becomes the difference. If they have the discipline and inner discipline that take his videos and send them out, they'll go to the website, look at the articles they like. So oh, I like about meditation, I'm going to post all about these. I like about numbers, I'll go there and find all the articles on numbers and I'll post about these. And my friends will know that I like about numbers and they say, oh this is interesting, I didn't know the shaykh wrote like this. Those are what's important because that can disseminate the knowledges, that disseminates all the teachings and at the end of the day we feel that, oh the Prophet is happy with us because I believe the shaykh's mission. I don't know, the uloom and the knowledges that are coming out, I, I see what its source is not of a normal source and this is what I want to support. And I made my life to support that way and so alhamdulillah they build that relationship and they build the nazar of Sayyidina Muhammad But if they want to build themselves they don't get that nazar and they eventually going to have a lion that bites them. Because in that group there's going to somebody going to turn 
And when they turn it's going to be vicious and they begin to attack and uh, become something of an unhealthy nature. But at the same time they didn't get the nazar because they weren't propagating the realities, they were just beginning to propagate themselves inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa basi Rasulat al-Fatiha.